Essex, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here today out with the Titan Implement Trailblazer TB1. This is a really cool concept and a new type of attachment for a small tractor that's really been getting a lot of attention and a lot of interest on the internet today. I'm going to walk you around this piece, show you a little bit of the mechanicals and talk through the operational aspects of this mower. Obviously the idea of having a mower out on the front of your loader is really appealing, right? It's now very easy to drive over top of things going forward rather than having to say drive over stuff with your tractor before it gets to your mower if you're trying to operate while going front. So that's cool. Also really nice that it's on a skid steer coupler. Very easy to drive up to, throw your two levers to lock it down and off you go. No fumbling around with your three point hitch. So that's a big pro. Driving the thing hydraulically is a really interesting concept. Um, it has a nice small Eaton motor on the front and simply just takes a feed and a return in order to power it. We'll talk through how these hydraulics are plumbed a little bit later. So cool. Uh, functionally, you've got a lot of different options on how this thing is going to work and it can work in a lot of different positions. So I've got it set up here just sitting straight out in front of the machine but this arm here can actually bend to put it in some other different configurations. I'll show you here how easy that is to do. So the first thing that we're gonna do is start the tractor up, raise the loader up in the air, and point the mower straight down. So once you flip this thing vertical, you now have the weight of the mower hanging on this pivot over here. Now there's a couple of locking pins in here, uh, just basic hitch pins that you pull out, and they're gonna unlock this thing and allow it to move. I stupidly, I can't say anybody else has probably ever done this before, I uh, tried to do this before reading the directions and uh, did not pivot it down and made a complete moron out of myself as I flailed around in the parking lot trying to manipulate this thing. <laughs> and she will swing away. Now, once we're off to the side, we've got an option of a couple different positions here. So you can see here, there's two pivots, okay? So we've got a, a pivot back here against the quick attach plate, and then a pivot right up here on the mower itself. And this is gonna give us several different positions that we can put this thing into in order to say, mow over the side of a bank or clean up some tree lines and, and reach out away from the tractor in a way that you can never do with a traditional mower. So you've got five different positions right here that we can pull down this locking pin. We're gonna bring this thing basically out here to straight out. And again, we could take that slightly up or slightly down. And then using this black rod right here, we're able to adjust this at being up 90 degrees or being out flat with the rest of the machine. Now, these adjustments, while they're very easy to make, one thing that this does not do well is allow these things to float. So every position that you're doing here, you're putting a pin in and putting this mower in more or less a rigid position. And from my playing with it before, one thing I was a little disappointed in was that these things can't float. So say this deck right here, for instance, you know, it can pivot back and forth if we don't lock this in, but with its weight and not like say good anti-scalp, rails and stuff on here, does cause it to want to dig in and not contour the way that you might want it to. So in the future, I think it'll be interesting to see if these companies can come up with a way to say, you know, put some bigger shoes or something on the front of this, or maybe a little trailing wheel here in the front that helps these things contour a little bit better because in their offset positions, they do tend to dig in a little bit. But the setup is very cool. You're able to position this mower in a way that you would never be able to put a normal rotary cutter. So what tractors are appropriate for an attachment like this? Obviously the demands of this thing are really a little unique, right? It is a 42 inch rotary cutter, but you don't size it onto a tractor that you would normally put a 42 inch rotary cutter onto. Uh, the hydraulics on this are gonna need between nine and 14 gallons per minute. Uh, that's generally gonna put you into the size of say a Kubota standard L on up. Um, in the New Holland line, you'd be into, say, a Boomer 30, the mid-size frame, and up into their bigger compacts. So it's not something for, say, a subcompact or a really small tractor. To get enough hydraulic flow out here, you need to have that 30-horse or so tractor. 
So if you remember back to a prior video that we did, we talked through a calculation that you could do that takes hydraulic flow and puts it in terms of horsepower, a number that we can understand a little bit better. If you go through and you take this 9 to 14 gallon per minute range that you have here, that's essentially between 12 and 17 engine horsepower. So significant, I mean more than enough in order to run a mower of this size, but not the amount of horsepower that you generally would say avail have available on the PTO of a tractor in order to run the mower. So kind of keep that in mind. If you go into grass to say three feet high, this isn't going to perform as well as what a PTO powered mower would because you're just not delivering that amount of horsepower out to it. So when we're looking for applications like this, we need to be looking for the ones that it's not for the everyday mowing, right? It's for those unique challenging places where you just can't get a traditional mower. See in the back of this tractor, we have the Titan Power Pack, and this is a unique piece and the principal reason why we're choosing to work with this particular company with this mower. The Power Pack brings a couple of different things to this equation. So most of your small tractors are not going to have enough hydraulic flow to really run this thing up to its potential, really maybe only scraping up against the minimum. The Power Pack gives you more than adequate hydraulic flow in order to deliver a lot more horsepower out to that mower and make it work its best. It also addresses the concerns that we have of feeding this thing and properly returning the oil to sump as this becomes a self-contained unit. The power pack with two hoses that run straight up to the mower, you can plug the thing onto your tractor and go with no worries about how you're going to get this thing hooked up. This also provides two added benefits in ballast. It weighs several hundred pounds, additional ballast to help offset that mower, and it also helps with your cooling. If you figure most of your tractors are usually going to have six or eight gallons of hydraulic fluid in the rear end, you're generating a lot of heat on this unit and driving that heat back into your tractor where there is no active cooling. In the case of this power pack, you've got 17 gallons of hydraulic fluid inside of a big metal box that can radiate that heat off and separates any of those concerns from your machine. So this is a really nice add-on for this piece. It completes it quite well. Obviously it's added expense, but I really think these are cool. There's a lot of neat applications I think you can come up with if you're a tinker and a guy that likes to work on equipment for this power pack. The business end of this is going to look much like a traditional rotary cutter. So we've got big blade bolts here on the underside with some traditional rotary cutter blades. You can see here these are reversible if you dulled these things out and you've hit some rocks and stuff with them. You can simply take these blades and flip them so you have another cutting surface available. Another cool thing with these as well is that these blades actually can stick out beyond the end of the mower here. So if you pull this thing the whole way out and you look straight down, you'll notice that the tips of the blades actually extend beyond the mower. That'll allow you to go up to small trees and those kinds of things and use those blades to kind of hack through them. So this big safety shield up here on the front is going to keep that covered up during normal operations. So you'll see these are spring loaded here as you push up against something this can go back and you're able to push say a small tree or something into this gap right here where this blade's going to be able to come around and cut it. So you see the very obvious pros to this, right? Uh, a unique mower that you can mow some tricky areas with that you just couldn't get a lot of other your mowing attachments into. That's very cool. Obviously there's some cons to this. So we talked through the hydraulic plumbing of this being a little complex. The power pack helps with that a lot, but that is an optional piece. You can save a well, $1,500 or more by plumbing one of these things in an alternative way. Just be very cautious with what you're doing. And of course, there is the safety aspect to this. Um, attaching this onto the loader will allow you to put this thing into a, a lot of places that you should not be operating it, just very frankly, right? Spinning blades like that can throw all kinds of debris and all kinds of material in all kinds of directions. And say, picking this thing up in the air and curling it back towards yourself while it's running is obviously a very bad idea. And there is nothing to prevent you from doing that. So it's definitely a piece that I would not give to a novice operator. I would really probably not let my kids run it or anything like that. Definitely something you want to stay away from. We use mowers like this on uh, skid steers and that kind of stuff as well. Uh, generally bigger, right? Bigger decks, bigger hydraulic motors, but when they do them on a skid steer, they attach a chain to the back side of the mower that you attach onto your skid loader to keep you from lifting that thing too high up in the air. So that little piece of safety equipment is not on any of these mowers that I've seen to this point. It would be very easy to put one on yourself. Just grab a short length of chain and go through one of the open holes in the back of the skid steer quick attach and maybe chain that onto the front of your grill guard. And that would just keep somebody from taking this thing and lifting it way up in the air where it really shouldn't be. So obviously 
a lot of, <laughs> with great power comes great responsibility, right? And this is absolutely one of those implements that you put in that category. You, you've really just got to be careful with what you're doing with it. Plumbing the hydraulics for this mower has to be done with a certain amount of care. If you think about what happens when one of these things is running, you bring this thing up to speed, you've got this big blade spinning out here. And that thing's going, it needs to be able to return the oil out of that motor in all circumstances. So in order to feed the oil into this thing, it can come from any number of places. You can run the feed off of a third function or a rear remote or the power pack that we have here on the back. But the return, it needs to go into a place where it can go back to what's called sump, basically run back into the tractor or into the power pack. So you cannot take both of these hoses and plug them straight into a rear remote or third function or you'll do damage. When we're pricing these things out for you, if you check the links down here at the bottom of the video, you'll find three different links. One's going to go to the mower, one to the power pack itself, and then one to a completing kit. That completing kit's going to give you the oil and the hoses and everything that you need in order to make this whole setup work between the tractor and the power pack. But if you're going to take it to your third function to return the sump, there's some custom hydraulic work that you're going to need to do in order to figure out how to do that return. So something our shop can talk you through on some common Kubota equipment that we know well, but if you have a different piece of equipment, hooking these up can come with a certain set of challenges. So one thing you want to be conscious of when you're using this is not pushing it too hard down onto the ground. It doesn't float real well, like I said before. So generally when I'm running this, I'm kind of hovering the thing off the ground a little bit. The arm there will allow it to pick up. If you have it in the fixed position, it won't move like that. Uh, but generally it's just going to work a little bit better if you are kind of floating it with your loader. It is quiet, I'll give you that. Between me, like, have it turned off, flip it on, and once it spins up, I can't even tell it's running, so that's pretty cool. You just, you don't have driveline chatter or any of that kind of stuff at all. On this offset position, I can see what I'm doing, uh, which is pretty neat, too. If it was straight out in front of the machine, I wouldn't have as good of a bead on the mower as what I do off the side, so that's cool. One thing I did earlier that I did not care for so much, um, it doesn't do a great job of cutting really close to the ground. So I came out here and tried to mow this grassy area before we filmed. And uh, <laughs> once I set the thing on the ground and wanted to drive it forward, it digs in. It doesn't uh, contour or skim across the ground real well. So mowing in reverse seemed to fix that. It kind of defeats the purpose. but. If you wanted to mow like right down against the ground, you can set the thing down and back up with it, and it drags back a lot better than it pushes forward. If you look back over here, I mean, this is kind of neat, right? I, there's some junk in the bottom here that I wouldn't normally be able to drive over top, but I can easily use the loader to lift the mower up and then set it down on top of the area that I want to mow. And so if you want to clean up around down trees and that kind of thing, an easy way to get in there. So I'm going to cut down the road here. Uh, this is the driveway coming up into our Elizabethtown store. I'm going to pull that pin out and push this down so that this thing will go down below center a little bit and we'll see how I can reach over this roadside as I drive down the side. So you can see here a little bit of what I was saying when I said in this offset position. I don't think I contour super well. so. When you go over center and you set this thing down a little bit, um, it pivots there so it can hinge. But once you hinge, if I drive forward, I'm twisting that entire thing against the loader and it, it just doesn't work well. So you can't really think of that end mower deck position as, as, as hinging there at the deck. You know, it, it's an offset and this position is really the one that you need to be using it in. See, here would be my a little frustration with that, isn't it? Well, there it's contouring a little bit. If I can set that front corner in, it does ride up and down a little bit. I can, seems that if I take the mower and I roll it back a little bit and keep my front edge up, I can contour a little bit, but that's that position that you want to watch because I am throwing some debris out in front of it because I've got the front face of the mower opened up. 
Another thing that you want to watch here from the safety perspective is when you have this thing turned on and you're going to bring it up to speed, you can, the camera guy's here in a safe place, trust me. We bring this thing up to speed and then reach back and I'm going to turn it off now. You're going to notice that the inertia of those blades keeps going and going and going and that's why again we were saying the oil needs to go back to sump and not be dead ended by a valve. There's a lot of inertia there and it takes a while for these things to stop. So back here I just came to a rock and I wanted to pop my mower off and reposition and turn it back on again. And you just got to remember when you flip this off it takes a while for all of that spinning mass to come to a stop. So as I'm going down the road here, uh, my bank is coming up really steep, you know, I was, I was cutting down before, now we're going to go up and we're going to go into the 90 degree position and see if we can push this back a little bit. This would be a tricky mow, right? This is not something you could ever do with a regular rotary cutter. As I bottom the thing out or hit stuff, the uh, it's not like a regular rotary cutter being that it's hydraulic drive. So it very naturally slows down and picks right back up again as you, you know, come into obstructions and stuff. It doesn't bang around and throw the slip clutch or knock a shear pin out or any of those kind of stuff. So the, the, uh, the debris side of this, it kind of handling that rough, there we go, just like I was saying, handling that rough stuff is really natural. It just starts right back up again. So to take the mower and put it up into a 90 degree position, we're going to come back up here again with the loader rolled down and pull out the pin from this little black bar. And then this bar is going to come up and hold the mower at 90 degrees so I can cut back this nearly vertical bank. So that was all pretty easy, grassy stuff. With that push bar and blade on the front, we should be able to knock down some pretty substantial things. So let's see if we can chop some stuff down. spot for cleaning out things with a mower is stuff like this so you got basically a wall of briars right uh, not super thick not super heavy like that three inch tree over there that we cut off but great demo for the kind of tricky things that the mower like this is really good for So that's a little bit on the Trailblazer by Titan implement. A couple intricacies to talk through with the mower in its relationship to other companies. Uh, firstly, when we talk Titan implement, you need to keep in your mind that there are two companies in our industry, Titan Implement, who manufactures equipment in Tennessee, and Titan Attachments, who's imports stuff from China into a no-name warehouse. Uh, two very different companies. This is a domestically made in the U.S. product by a good group of guys down there who we get a lot of really well-priced implements from. Good group of guys. I also have a relationship though with another company that looks exactly the same as this and that's Lane Shark. Uh, Lane Shark seems to be the guy that came to market first with this concept. Who knows what happened between him and Titan, but we're ending up with two strikingly similar looking products. Um, we chose to go with Titan because it is kind of, say, the Gen 2 product. Uh, it has this guard in the front to keep those blades covered when you're pushing into things. The blade bolts between the blades and the mower uh, shaft is a, a real blade bolt like you'd have on a rotary cutter. It's not a nut and bolt like the Lane Shark guy uses. And Titan also has this power pack available to us that's not available through that other company. So we do have a relationship with both guys. We are able to sell both products at this point, but it, for us as a dealership, this is the one that fits into the product line for us a little bit better and is a relationship with a company that we've already had. So if you're looking for a piece like this, and we can help him more than happy to fix your tractor up with one. And give us a call at Messix at 800-222-3373 or online at messix.com.